Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things peas. Peas is another new crop that was added to the Farm Sim franchise with Farming Simulator 25 and you're going to be making use of this really neat piece of machinery, the Oxbow EPD540E, in order to harvest it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get a little bit of background information on peas provided by Giants with this particular infographic. As you can see, peas are going to have an average yield of 9,600 liters per hectare. In this particular video, we're going to be using Field 41 on Riverbend Springs, which is just over one hectare in size. It lists as having an average selling price on Easy as $3,119 per thousand liters. Although my calculation is a little bit different, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Seeds per hectare are going to be 250 liters, so we're not using a whole lot of seed per hectare in order to put this particular crop in the ground. We've got an average growing duration of four months, so we're going to be able to plant in March and April and harvest sometime between July and September. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our growth calendar. And we're going to see, once again, this kind of backs up our infographic. March through April is going to be the planting season. Meanwhile, July through September is going to be the harvest season. Now, if we look at our prices screen, you're going to see why I said their average price and my calculated average price are a little bit off. We are loaded up here on Easy Economy. And if we take the average of these two numbers, 3405 and 2934, I get an average of $3,169 per thousand liters on Easy Economy to sell your peas. On Riverbend Springs, you're going to be able to sell your peas at the canning factory, which is the preserved food factory that is pre-placed here on the map. You're going to be able to sell it at the Farmer's Market, the Goldcrest Valley Train Sell Point, Grain Barge Terminal 1 and 2, as well as the Grain River Silo. And I have placed a preserved food factory here for this video, so that is also showing up. Now, as far as what can you do with your peas? Well, you can can them down at the preserved food factory. And if you do can your peas, you're going to be able to sell them at the farmer's market, Goldcrest Valley's train sell point, the restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk that is outside of your starting farm location, and by no means never buy canned peas from the warehouse. Just don't do it. You're going to be able to sell your canned peas at an average price of 7761 liters, or $7,761 per 1,000 liters. And that number was obtained by simply taking 7836 and 7686 and dividing that sum by 2. As I mentioned, we are here on Riverbend Springs at Field 41 because Field 41 is approximately 1.18 hectares in size. Or should I say Farmland 41 is 1.18 hectares in size. So this is about as close as we're going to get to a field that is exactly one hectare. That is fairly easy to work because it is a nice rectangle. Now in order to plant your peas, you're going to need to have prepared your soil. So this video isn't going to be talking about how do you prepare your fields for planting. You can find that in my how to obtain 100% yield bonus video. And I'll go ahead and put an info card up in the upper right corner for that. So we are going to assume that this field has already been mulched in the previous year if it needed it. It's already been plowed if needed. It's already been limed if needed. And in this respect, we've gone ahead and fertilized this field to 100% and cultivated the field so it is right and ready for planting. In order to do that planting for this particular video, I'm going to use the Limpkin Soltar 12 Cedar. It is going to be available right here, or it's going to be looking right here. And for our seed, well, we have three options. We have a big bag pallet of Pioneer Seed. We have a big bag of just no-name seed, or we can buy pallets of Pioneer Seed bags. Now where are we going to find those in the shop? Well if we come here to our vehicle shop and we scroll down here to our objects we're going to be able to find big bags and from here we can see our seed big bag $1,260 per thousand liters. We also have our big bag pallet $1,260 per thousand liters 
And under pallets, we're going to find our seed bag, $1,260 for 1,050 liters. Of course, it's got to be a little bit different. Now we can also find that cross-referenced up here with respect to our seeders and planters here under the category of seeds. And again, for this particular video, we're going to use our Lemkin Soltar because it does have the ability to plant peas, as do all of the other seeders that are available here in this category. When it comes time to harvest, well, we're going to be able to use our pea harvester. It's going to be found here under the vegetables category. And we have just one pea harvester that is available in the base game. Now, our tips and tricks videos, they focus on base gameplay. We don't try to incorporate mods in any way in these videos. By the time you watch this video, there may be a multitude of pea harvesters out there in mod format. Some of them may be wider harvesting. Some of them may have higher capacity. Some of them may have faster working speeds. Some of them may be far cheaper because they are trail pea harvesters. In the end, use the pea harvester you prefer to use. But again, in this video, we're focusing on base game functionality. Therefore, we're going to be using the Oxbow EPD 540E. Kind of a kind of a nice little ring to the name, don't you think? Now, with respect to our vegetable planters, our vegetable planters do not have the ability to put peas in the ground, so we are going to be reserved to using our standard planter. With that said, let's go ahead and hook up our cedar. Let's load it up with seed and, well, let's get to the process of putting our peas in the ground. Now, before we start seeding, we need to make sure that we hit Y on our seeder to transfer our magical seed over to peas. There we go. We're going to go ahead and turn this thing on and off to the race as we go. I'm going to go ahead and finish seeding this particular field in peas, and I'll come back and we'll confirm how much seed we used. Remember, we're only supposed to be using, I believe, 210 liters per seed per hectare, and then I will fast forward into April and see what our first roast stage is going to look like. Okay, so seeding is now done. We have 2,808 liters worth of seed down in the lower right corner. We started with 3,050 liters of seed, so that means that we consumed a total of 242 liters worth of seed. The infographic, if you recall, stated that we would be consuming 250 liters worth of seed per hectare. So we're right around that general range. So overall, you're not going to go through a ton of seed with respect to putting your peas in the ground. And we can see we have fully seeded the entire field right here. Welcome to April, and our, our poor little field has been overrun with weeds. You can see our little peas here. Our peas are being overrun with weeds, so we really need to do something with that. We've got a mix of big and small weeds, I feel. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a sprayer to take care of those weeds. And uh, we'll see how things turn out. But overall, there we go. We're in April. We have our first growth state. Welcome to May. We have another growth state. I've taken care of these weeds. We're up to 95% yield bonus here. So we should see quite a nice boost to our overall yield from the default of 9,600 liters per thousand. Let's go ahead and move back into June. And uh, we'll see what it looks like. We should be about two months away from harvest. Well, our peas are coming up really well now. They're starting to really fill in the field overall. And it uh, looks like they are flowering here. So I assume we're going to be pretty darn close to getting these things out of the ground. Uh, it is June. July should be the first opportunity to do that. So let's go ahead and fast forward to July and see if we're lucky enough to have this stuff ready to harvest. It is indeed ready to harvest, so we are gonna be firing up that oxbow 
and uh, well, seeing what it's all about. So I was taking a look around the Oxbow earlier and I was really impressed with the overall clarity of a lot of the stickers and other things that we have here on this piece of machinery. It's kind of a unique looking piece of machinery, even compared to some of the other harvesters that we have. Because your peas, I mean, they're going to go into this tank and everything is self-contained. Right, we've seen our spinach harvester at this point, and you know it blows the the product back into the um, into the rear tank. This has got everything self-contained. I'm going to lower the the head and turn it on. some of these animations going on here pretty good overall visibility in cab and I was wondering what that little chain was and well it's it's a guy but you can see it from inside so you can see where the edge of your head is I was wondering what that little chain was earlier now we know it's pretty neat All right, let's go ahead and get this thing harvested. Oh, check that out. We got some nice, we got the leaves and plant matter, dirt and such coming out the sides of these things. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this harvested. I'm not going to have you hang around for that entire process. And uh, we'll come back once we have either completed the field or filled the harvester so we are definitely going to be needing to unload our harvester multiple times I am already nearly full and basically I just hired a helper made one full pass around and of course the helper does what the helper does we don't really understand but at any rate it's already full so let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna unload our harvester we need to pull our trailer up alongside, jump into our harvester, and I want to point out the, the animation on this ladder is really neat. So when you get in, the ladder slides to the side. When you get out, it slides out. Kind of neat. Anyway, we're going to hit O to extend our pipe out, and then we need to basically get over here closer to it. And there we go. Our peas are dumping into our trailer so not a whole lot of capacity on this particular harvester and once it's unloaded we're gonna hit O to bring that back in and then off we go to continue our overall harvest So I wanted to demonstrate something else here with respect to offloading peas. And that is the ability to move the conveyor belt. So if we right click, we can move the conveyor belt up and down by moving the mouse up and down. And left click, up and down. I'm not really sure what that's changing. It doesn't appear to be changing much, if anything. But right click, you can change the, the angle of the uh, the conveyor belt there to best work with you know whatever trailer you might happen to have. But we can't seem to extend the conveyor belt vertically at all. So that does seem to imply that um, you are going to need to be paying attention as to the size of the trailer that you're going to use with this particular harvester uh, because well if you get too high of a trailer and I'd say the trailer we're using here in this video is just about on that limit then, um, then you're not going to be able to offload onto the trailer something else that I want to point out is 
that we are getting a mulched state with our uh, our harvester here. So if we check our info here, now you can see we are getting mulched areas here on the field where we are basically dropping our our plant matter down on the ground. So while the entirety of the field isn't mulched because there are areas where we haven't dropped leaves and plant matter and everything, just the act of harvesting this crop will give us a mulch state for the next cycle. So we had a total harvest yield of 18,438 liters. And again, field 41 is gonna be really close to one hectare in size. Now, if we go back to our infographic, we should have gotten 9,600 liters of peas with zero bonus, so 100% yield. The field was showing a 95% bonus, so we got a approximately a 92% bonus based on those numbers. Now, a few things that I noticed is when I was manually harvesting the field with GPS enabled, if the pipe was in to the field, I was noticing that I was doing a little bit of crop destruction as a result of running with pipe in. If I flipped it around and ran with the pipe out like I should be doing, then there was no crop destruction. So did I do 3% of crop destruction possibly before I realized that? Possibly, possibly not. At any rate, for me, in my opinion, 92% bonus when the field was showing 95% bonus. It's good enough. It's good enough for me. At any rate, let's go and sell a little bit of these peas just to see what our price is. So there we go. We did a, a little bit. We now have 16,710 liters. But the bulk of our money is going to be, I think, with our canned peas. That's what we found with our spinach, was that if we further produce, then we're gonna get a whole whole lot more output out of our, our money, I should say, out of our pea harvest. So let's go and dump all of this stuff here into our production. We're gonna get 45% of what we put in as far as back out, because for every 100 liters worth of peas that goes in we're going to get 45 liters worth of peas that come out and our canned peas well they should be they should be 1000 liters each so let's go ahead and activate that and let's come back in one month and uh, see what we've got also before we go away i've got 0.6 hours on this harvester i did for the most part harvest this crop manually but I did for a little bit have a hired helper on there so you could probably say that if you did it manually it's going to be more efficient than a hired helper especially how they're dealing with these corners at this point I think you could probably harvest one hectare every half hour of real time if you did it manually so we have a total of seven pallets of canned peas off of the 16,000 and some odd liters that we dumped into our production facility. If we had dumped all of our harvest into the production facility, we would have gotten an eighth pallet out of the production. So let's just go and sell one pallet at each of these farmer's market areas. So the small kiosk, $9,083. $9,083 per pallet times eight. $72,000 from one hectare of land per year. $9,350. So let's up the ante a little bit. And now over here to our last farmer's market. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000. $7,000.
7,755. Oh, that's a bad deal. Right? Bad deal there. So, yeah, peas. Pretty good profit if you go ahead and invest into a canning factory. Now, of course, you know, that is going to be a bit of investment as well. Right? This factory is going to cost you $330,000 to put down if you're going to put down the placeable. The canning factory here in game, well, it may be a little bit more cost effective. Uh, you know, it's going to depend. Let's see here. Canning factory. Let's visit this thing. $330,000 for the canning factory that was pre placed here on River Van Springs. So that is also, you know, going to be a bit of an investment. And again, if you are going to buy your pea harvester outright, $571,000. Now, I leased the pea harvester for this particular harvest. So if you lease it just one day, let's jump back in here. And what's, what's that going to cost us? So it's going to cost us basically $29,000 to lease it one day. So of that $70,000 profit 30,000 is going to go away for your harvester if you can manage to borrow enough money and buy that harvester outright then uh, good right you're going to be able to make a fair bit of money and that's just one hectare if you go hog wild and put all of your fields into peas well you're going to be able to probably start running a profit in a pretty short order given the fact that you can process those into canned peas and make a pretty good penny out of that. So guys, I hope you all have enjoyed this rundown of peas as a new crop in Farming Simulator 25. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you gonna be being, are you gonna go into, should I say, are you gonna dive into being a pea farmer? Because it does seem to have a fair bit of profit into it. And until next time, happy farming.